For those of you who don't know me, my name is Jerry Smith, and I am the Director of Business Development for the Maui Economic Development Board, and I'm also the guy that welcomes you back from lunch. Before we get started, I'd like to recognize uh, Council Chair Kelly King uh, for, for coming and attending, so let's put our hands together. Thank you. Kelly, thank you for your support. Our next speaker is a Googler. Jules Kramer has spent over 20 years in the tech industry focusing on software development and business strategy. Jules was kind enough to serve as a coach at MEDB's last startup weekend, and she has worked at Microsoft and owned her own business before joining Google in 2010. She's focused on strategic market intelligence, managing developer relations and product strategy, and currently has taken on leading the developer relations teams for cloud startups, higher education, and G Suite developer platform. Before I bring her up, I just want to tell you that last night I sent Jules a, an email and I told her to rest her vocal cords for today. And before I hit the send button, I was like, is it C-O-R-D-S or is it C-H-O-R-D-S? So you know what I did? I Googled it, okay? Google has a whole host of free services to help small businesses like yours, and here to tell you more about it is the very, very googly Jules Creamer. Thank you. Uh, aloha, everyone. Oh, those lights are super bright. Um, so, as mentioned, I, I'm going to have to stand here. I'm Jules Kremer, and I manage a team on the developer relations org in Google. Essentially, that, what, what that means is that my day job is to lead Google engineers who travel around the world and talk to other engineers about how to use Google Cloud Platform. But one of the coolest things about being a Googler is that we have so many opportunities to work on things we're passionate about, even if it's not our day job. So we call this 20% time, and all Googlers get the opportunity to spend 20% of their working hours dedicated to something else. Um, it could be something related to your job. Most often, we all choose something that we're particularly passionate about. Uh, for me, I'm a Native American Indian, so I have spent the last nine years at Google using all of my 20% time to help indigenous cultures. Uh, kind of understand and be a part of technology. So, for example, I recently got to work with the Navajo Nation to ensure that uh, Navajo and a couple other American Indian languages are part of Google Translate. And <laughs> thanks. <laughs> Didn't expect that. Thanks. Um, yeah, super cool work, by the way. Um, I did check Native Hawaiian's already in there, so I, I can't I can't go down that path, but I would have. Um, <laughs> And another group I've been working with through my indigenous culture uh, work is a group called Grow With Google. And so Grow With Google is an organization that reaches out to small and medium-sized businesses all around the world, and their focus is to get these small businesses online, developing a presence so that you as a small business can reach customers and customers can reach you. And so I wanted to start, and hopefully this works, with a short video intro. Um, and I wanted to use this video because I'm hopeful it will inspire all of you to think about the challenge I'm about to put in front of you. I'm going to fire hose you a bunch of Google projects today. Um, so I'm not going to give you any that tangibly that you're going to be like, I'm going to go do that right away. I'm just going to name them and hopefully you'll do the research later. So this video is meant to get us on the same page and for you to think about the ways you fit into this scenario. So hopefully it's going to play. Ooh, look, it's going to play. I'm so excited.
these moments are happening, like they're happening right now. For, someone has their phone out right now and it's happening a moment like this in this room, I promise. So I can remember, for example, a couple months ago when we had a particularly bad upcountry storm, I came out of my house in the morning and I saw a tree very precariously balanced over my propane tank. And I thought, oh my gosh, I really need to fix that. So I took out my phone and I used Google Maps and I looked for a tree trimmer and I found the amazing team at Climbing High Maui who came and helped me, right? That's another moment. Or maybe the more urgent moment when I was standing in front of 3,000 people, or about to stand in front of 3,000 people in London, and Maui County called me to tell me they noticed I had used 10,000 gallons of water last month when I usually only used one. Whipped out my phone, did a Google search for someone who on an emergency service could come out and figure out what was happening at my house while I was in London. So these moments, they're happening everywhere, right? They're happening to all of us. And your job is just put your business in the line to be that person that customer finds. So we don't go online anymore, right? I don't know how old all of you are, but I remember the days when you had to click the modem and you heard all the pretty sounds and then you got connected to this thing called the internet, right? That doesn't happen. We all live online. We all have a device in our pocket now and we use that device to fulfill basically all of our needs. If you have a child who's under 20, I promise you they literally do everything to fulfill their needs using that device. And so today what I'm gonna do is show you some of the ways that you can hopefully connect with those customers and build an online presence to both get to them and engage with them and then use your budget and your advertising and marketing and the business initiatives that you have to grow your business more solidly. So I can see it there, I don't know why I keep turning around. So I have the blessing of working at Google, which is a blessing in and of itself, and I have the second blessing to live here on Maui. That means I am an on an awful lot of planes. And one thing I've noticed as I've been on those planes is that every time I come back to Maui, I watch this pattern happen. We're flying over Kahului, everybody's ooing and aahing out the window at the majesty that's majesty. I mean, the majesty that's Maui, right? And then the plane lands, and the phones come out, airplane mode goes off, and what starts happening? Those moments start happening. They're looking for the restaurant near their hotel. They're looking for the best surf spot. They're looking for the greatest surf lessons. So all of these moments are happening the minute that we land. And one thing that we know at Google is that in these special moments, in the moment when people are looking for, to fulfill their immediate need, they don't care about brand. So it doesn't matter if I'm building Jules cool snorkeling mask, I have just as much opportunity to reach those customers as if I was a big multinational corporation. And so, I don't keep looking there, anyway. <laughs> Sorry. And so the first step in you getting into that cycle is to use a free tool from Google called Google My Business. And what Google My Business lets you do is it lets you have a free profile that gives data about your company. This is things like your location, your operating hours, the description of your company. And then Google uses the data from this profile to feed you into the search results of people searching near and far for these things in these moments. So another example, I'm a huge ramen fan. Ramen is my comfort food. It's what I turn to when I'm having just, you know, one of those days that life throws at you. I live up country. Ramen isn't as available up country. And I haven't spent enough time around the island to find the best ramen place yet. One day, about a month ago, I was sitting in Kahului. I was having a really bad day. My daughter just wrecked her third car. I'm like, oh, I just need a bowl of ramen, right? <laughs> So I whipped out my phone, I'm sitting in the airport, Kahului parking lot, and I see ramen at a food truck right by Costco. And if you haven't tried it, you really should, because it is the best ramen on the island. And I found my ramen heaven, again, having that moment with my phone, and a particularly bad moment when I needed something to be fulfilled. And so we know, well, I should go back for a minute. We know that about 87% of people who own a smartphone turn to that device first when they're looking for something, as opposed to their desktop. And we also know that 30% of all searches done on your mobile phone are related to where you are in the vicinity. So if I had been somewhere else on the island, that food truck would probably not have been the first place that showed up, right? And so you wanna make sure that you're aware of where you are and that you can reach those users doing those moments. <clears throat> and so the first step is Google My Business. When you go home tonight, the first thing you should do is what? Google your business and see what people see when they reach and search for you, and see what's in your business profile listing, because there's probably stuff there already. And then make sure you complete it, and you add all the special things about your business. Maybe that's photos, maybe you do a virtual tour on it, whatever it is to make that stand out, so that when people do get on your search results, they pick you to go to. And then we also know that research shows that businesses that actually listen to their customers and respond and demonstrate that they're listening to their customers 
actually get more customers in the long run. So one of the things that Google My Business has done is giving you some tools so that you can engage with your customers after they find you. So the first thing they've given you is a feature called Posts. And Posts lets you basically reach your audience. You can use it to advertise like a new service, a new product, maybe you're particularly busy and you want to be like, hey, you need a reservation. Um, so that's the first thing you can do. And then we also give you ways to interact with your customers. So once you've verified your Google My Business listing, you can turn on messaging. So customers can actually reach out to you directly, ask you a question, and you can respond. And then probably, and you've all used this, I promise, the most uh, popular feature of Google My Business is the customer reviews. So when you Google something and you find some listings, what do you do? You look at the listing, and then you look at the customer reviews. Because you want to know if everyone else who's already gone to that establishment thinks you should too. So again, once you verify your business listing, <clears throat> you can read and respond to those reviews, and then customers or potential customers can see that you care and that you're one of those businesses that's operating in this way of listening to customer feedback. And so while the Google My Business is really powerful, right, it is a very templated, very structured data environment. It's going to ask you to list very specific things about your business, and it's there for those people who are in that time of need using their mobile device. But there's other users and other ways that people find things on the internet, mostly doing like really broad scope internet searches. I'm looking for a bakery or I'm looking for surf lessons. <clears throat> so, sorry, I have this problem with my voice. Um, <clears throat> so, the other thing that you can do is build an online website. How many of you already have one for your business? Awesome, most of you do, which is really great. So if you have an online, bit, or online website, you know that it really represents who you are as a business. Not only how you lay it out and what its colors are and the look and feel, but the content that you actually put on there should be representative of who you are and how you want the community to view you and your business. So super important to have a plan before you start this website, right? You wanna know whose audience you think is gonna come. Because if you put about a lot of content out there for people that you think are gonna read books, but really you sell, bakery products, you've done the wrong thing, right? So you really wanna have a plan. You wanna know who your audience is and how you're gonna reach them. And then you really want to uh, have some goals that you can measure. So maybe that's you wanna get 10 people to your website every week, probably a little bit higher than that, but let's just set really small goals for the beginning. Or maybe it's that you want to build a marketplace and you wanna immediately get some sales via your online web presence. All of those are really valid goals. And so when you start thinking about that, you go, okay, so what if I do this website? How do I get people to click on it? How do I get them there? And we call this organic search results. You probably heard this called search engine optimization or SEO. It's a topic in and of itself. It could take a whole conference. It does have whole conferences. I'm certainly not here to tell you I'm gonna share all of SEO with you, but I did wanna give you just a few things to think about as you start a website or if you have a website to make sure you're doing the right things that your business is found in these organic search results. So first, it's all about content making sure you have useful content that's applicable to the audience. And second, you wanna make sure that you like, have really good hygiene on your website. Most of you <clears throat> probably will have used like a website builder or some free tool to stand up that website versus you know, writing the code yourself. Um, I would write the code myself. How many of you wrote your own code for your website? <laughs> Yay, there's a couple programmers in here, that's awesome. Um, so anyway, you're gonna use this free tool, and the free tool will probably do a lot of this for you, so don't get overwhelmed. I'm simply giving you this information so you look for the right things to make your website the best one out there. So first, original content. Have some good website hygiene, meaning you created titles, you have descriptions for your web page. you're using the right keywords. So if you're selling ramen, you have ramen, you have noodles, you have yumminess, right? You have all those key keywords on your page. If you're selling bakery products, they're gonna be a, a different list, right, that you use. And then the, probably the most crucial thing you need to think about is, how many of you have had this experience? If I don't see every hand raised, I'm gonna be surprised. How many of you have gone to a website, gone to Google, whatever your favorite search engine is, and you put in a search term and you get a whole bunch of results and you click on one, and then it just spins? Nothing happens, right? You're just sitting there, you're like, well, what is this website, where am I going to? And then you leave, right? And you never, ever, ever go back to that website because you had a really bad experience. So that's the number one thing you don't want to have happen to your website, and the number one culprit there is images. So you want to be really clear that you understand what you're putting on your website and the impact that it might have to load time. Images are absolutely the number one thing. Usually if you're using a website builder, it'll massage the, inner, the image for you to be right, but if you're doing it on your own, make sure you think about things like that. And like I said, content is king. If you don't have good content, no one's coming back to your site. So you wanna make sure that your content's very intentional, that you're using content that's fresh and updated. You wanna make sure you're using content that's visually appealing. 
Content is absolutely the critical aspect of what you put on your website. And so, if you do all that and you do it right and you have this beautiful website with all this beautiful content, you've done your right keywords, how do you tell what people see or what Google sees? So Google gives you this free search tool called, or free search console tool called Google Search Console. And basically you can think of this as the way to see what Google sees, right? To see what users to your website see. And you can go on there and it will show you things like the number one keyword people found your site on is X. Or you can add and remove content. And it'll even surface like different problems in your website. Maybe a navigation link is broken, for example, that you didn't know were broken and now you can go proactively fix them. And another free tool from Google is this thing called Google Trends. I think Google Trends is really amazing. And here's how I think you should look at it for your business. So what Google Trends does, it allows you to do sentiment analysis across the greater World Wide Web. And what this means is that if you are a pizza maker and you suddenly are using Google, not suddenly, but you're using Google Trends, and you discover that yellow line down there is the searches for gluten-free pizza around the world are skyrocketing. But you don't have gluten-free pizza on your menu. Maybe you want to because clearly everyone in the world is looking for gluten-free pizza these days, right? So you use Google Trends to figure out how other people see your world, see your industry, what terms they use, and then you can use those to apply them to your website to make sure you're the one that shows up in the search results. And just briefly, I wanted to touch on email marketing because this sort of ties into the whole content thing. So what email marketing allows you to do is do you know, targeted campaigns to users who have subscribed to your list. By the way, I see everyone taking pictures, and just for a note, I, this is going to be a public uh, doc, so you can just click on the link and get all of this yourself. Um, <laughs> sorry, I should have called that out in the beginning. Anyway, so what you, what you can do with... Uh, I was appreciating all the flashes in my eyes, but... Um, <laughs> so what you can do with email marketing is actually intertwine your content, right? So if you do a campaign, you can link to your online website content. You could link to a post from your business profile page. And then you can take all those things and get insights from it, which I'm going to talk about in a minute, that will help you understand which pieces of content in your newsletter were the most effective, how, which ones brought new users in, which ones kept new or ex existing users coming back. All right. So we've talked about your My Business listing for that moment in time when you're looking at your phone and you need something right now. We've talked about doing a website for more broad search usage. And there's one more thing you can kind of do to amplify all of your efforts here, and that's use advertising. So I showed you the screenshot earlier that just had the organic search results. Um, and now I'm going to move to showing you a little bit more about ads. Before I go into it, I want to mention that um, most of what I'm talking about is completely free. Ads has a paid version of paid ads, and so I am going to touch on that a little bit because I think it's important for you to know how it works. So first, when you sign up for paid ads, you will get like a wizard, a step-by-step -step guide to walk you through putting an ad online, where you should put it, and control where it's displayed. <clears throat> and this is how it sort of appears. So remember the previous screenshot where in the green was all the organic search results? This is the same search results, but with paid ads in place. So you can see in the, the red boxes here, they've paid, with this paid ad, they actually get the first eyeballs on the page, and that's the benefit to the paid ad, is you're, you're ranked pretty far up there. But paid ads don't really work the way it might sound like they work, because we call this pay-for-click. So what that means is <clears throat> that um, when a user, when, so remember in the old days when you used to advertise in a phone book, or probably even today you still advertise in newspapers or magazines or anything like that, and you, you pay for that ad. And then you hope that the eyeballs that land on that ad actually care about what you're trying to sell. With paid ads and targeted advertising, you already know that they searched for bakery. Right? You know that, you know your ad is related to bakery. So you've eliminated the randomness of your ad. And you actually don't pay for the ad to show up in the search results. You only pay for the ad if the user clicks the ad. So we call this pay for click. And it's really important to understand this as you go through your advertising or your marketing budget, because it is a very different thing than standard marketing where you just don't know how the ad's going to perform. And so um, what you can do is take these ads and then filter them everywhere, right? As an example, if you sell Lays and you ship worldwide, you're going to want to advertise worldwide on every website that talks about Lays, talks about Plumeria, talks about Orchids, whatever it is. And so we call this kind of advertisement the display network advertisement. It's the same ad, but it shows up in a different context. 
So the display network is millions and millions of websites that all kind of work together. These include websites that have billions of users, like Gmail and YouTube. And what this is, and I'm sure you've seen these ads, we call them inline ads, and they're based on the content of the page versus the search term that a user used. This is really important to embrace display networking because it actually gets you to the other end of the purchasing cycle. So you've you know, had the, the business listing that got the person in need. You've got your website, so you've got broad search results. And now what happens when somebody you know, searches bakery and they've clicked on a link? What if that wasn't you and you want it to be you? So for example, you search for best surf spot in Maui, you wind up on a Maui Now article, and in the middle of the Maui Now article you see an ad. And that ad's for like surf lessons or whatever, right? That is a display network ad. So it's related to the content and it gives you another way to reach users who didn't get you in the first two search ways. All right, so when you do all of this, much like your online website, you'll need to have a plan for like how to make it actually impactful. And so we call this search engine marketing, or SEM. And again, whole conferences on this, not here to tell you exactly how to do it, just here to tell you like, define your goals, have a pay-for-click budget in mind of what you want to spend here, and then do the right thing and use the tools that are available to you for free to track those ads. Is my money being well spent? Could I target them some other way to reach different customers? Probably the tracking to improve your performance is, in my opinion, the absolute like, bare minimum, the thing you have to do to spend your money wisely and build your business better. <clears throat> okay, so now you have your business profile, you have an online profile, and you've done some advertisement. All of this activity that you're doing to reach your customers is gonna generate a huge amount of data. So much data that it will blow your mind how much data and insights you could have from all the stuff you've already done online. So let's level set on a couple of things super quick. First, data is a fact. 1,500 people visited my website yesterday. Analytics is a way for you to get a pattern or see a trend in that fact. So for example, of the 1,500, seven of them, 700 of them were using a mobile phone, and the rest all came from a desktop. And then insights is the ability to say, hey, wow, of those people who visit me from a mobile phone, they're 30% more likely than the person coming from the browser to buy my ramen. And so this allows you to really see who your customers are, how everything you've done is performing, and then target your business strategy to that. And so again, you hear me use the word goal a lot here. It's all about knowing where to start and what you're really looking for. The vast amounts of data that will be available to you will overwhelm you if you simply like open up the dashboard and go, hey, what's in here? So you really want to ask yourself a question, what's my goal and is it measurable? So for example, that might be, I want to go from 1,500 people to 3,000 people. That's a goal and it's attainable and it's measurable. What you don't want to do is create a goal you cannot achieve because you'll just get frustrated and walk away from the tools. So a goal that you can't achieve is something like, hmm, my, my ramen sales are about 10% and I want to make them 90 in a week. Probably not going to happen, right? So make sure you're being realistic with yourself and that you've sort of tracked where you're investing to see how that comes back. <clears throat> and the most powerful tool, if you listen to anything I say today, that you could possibly use is Google Analytics. Another free tool, and Google Analytics is like the most amazing tool from Google, it's completely free. It is used by the biggest companies on the planet. It's used by the biggest products on the planet. And so what I thought I'd do is give you a personal story about how impactful this can be for your business. This is on kind of a bigger scale than small and medium-sized business, but I hope it'll demonstrate what I'm trying to say. So my favorite job ever was on the Angular team at Google. And Angular is an open source JavaScript framework, which means we give it away for free. So there's no revenue associated to the building of the product itself. What that means is there isn't a big, huge team of people making this product. There was 25 engineers and me. So because I was the only non-engineer, I wore every other hat, head of customer service, I'm the head of marketing, I'm the head of everything, right, that isn't actually building the product. And so every day I would come in and I would sit down and I would open up my Google Analytics dashboard. And the reason that I did that is it would basically inform the strategy I had to take for the rest of the day to improve our business. So what Google Analytics could show me is, hey, you know, overnight, 50,000 more people dropped on this page on your website. And so maybe we had re released a feature the previous day. And maybe what I start noticing is, people are coming back to that page just over and over and over again. The signal that tells me is, I built a feature no one can use, and I better go address my product strategy. 
Or one day I woke up and all of a sudden we had this like huge spike, like, you know, you want to see these kind of spikes, but it came from China and we didn't have docks in Chinese. And so I knew the drop off rate was really huge. And so I had to then take our product strategy and our business initiatives and completely change them so I could get docs in Chinese to address that user audience. So these are the ways that big companies and big products use Google Analytics to inform their strategy and all of this you can do too, it's a free tool. Okay, the amazing insights that Google Analytics can give you are like, I can't even begin to list the number of questions you can ask it. But when you open it up, it'll show you like right now in real time, here's the people on your website, here's what they're searching for, here's where they came from. For example, one day I found on my personal website, I found a bunch of links from another website. I'm like, what? where are all these people coming from? And, it, and it's like a personal website. And it turned out someone knew I was a Googler and had included my personal website on some advertisement for Google people. And so it was driving all this traffic towards my personal website. I was able to call that person and ask them to take it down, right? So there's things that'll just show you that will blow your mind, um, but it really can inform like what you should do for your business. And then on top of that, there's some cool like pre-canned tools that are specifically made for small businesses. So in particular, Google My Business um, <clears throat> is built on top of Google Analytics and it's specifically made for what we saw from small businesses, the reporting that they need. So for example, you can log into Google My Business Insights and see your call log. And what does that do for you? Well, if you see like in the screenshot, for example, Thursday is like a huge spike in the number of people who are calling this business. So maybe they need to extra staff themselves on Thursdays to address that customer service need. Um, even cooler, you can actually log into your My Business Profile and see where on the island people are finding directions to your business. So like if all of a sudden you know everyone from Lahaina, like all your business is coming from Lahaina, hopefully you have good directions from Lahaina on your business profile, right? So these are the kinds of insights that you can get for free. <laughs> and then lastly, because my colleague AG and B and I spend our normal day job working on G Suite, we would be remiss to not mention it. So again, this is not a completely free tool, which is why I'm just gonna briefly mention it. But G Suite <clears throat> is a set of services, it includes Gmail for your business, Google Docs, Google Sheets, Google Slides, and a host of other applications that basically can run your entire business. So another story, um, in addition to ramen, I'm a huge beer fan, like huge. You don't even wanna know how much beer I consume. And uh, not, not in a bad way, but um, in the I'm a beer lover way. Um, and my favorite beer restaurant is a place called Encinitas Ale House. It's in Encinitas, California, but it's actually run and managed by a local Kula girl. And her name is Brooke, and she's wonderful. Uh, if you ever heard of Ned Simmons, the uh, Maui photographer, this is his child. Um, and she runs their entire business on Google Docs and Google Sheets. And the way she does this is she uses all of the beer inventories in Google Sheets. All of her customer outreach is using a, a Google website builder and Google Forms. And then all of her, for example, menus are in Google Docs. So the minute she opens up a menu and changes something, it's automatically online in real time for everybody consuming that content externally. So again, lots of powerful tools, can run your whole business, don't have the time to go into it all, but tomorrow AGV is gonna go a little bit deeper into some of the G Suite tools and give you some hands-on experience as well. Okay, so we've talked about my Google My Business listing, what are y'all gonna do tonight? Google My Business. <laughs> and then you're gonna complete your profile, work on your online website, and if you're wondering what the next call to action from Google is, the only thing you really need to access everything I just mentioned today is a Google account, that's it. So if you don't already have a Google account, cruise over to Google, get a Google account, you can start to play with these tools. Again, this was like literally a fire hose of things you should think about and products you can use. Tomorrow, AGV will go into a little bit more hands-on detail with Google My Business and some of the Google Analytics and Trends. Um, I'm here to answer any questions. I live here on Maui and Haiku, happy to help in any way I can the local community. Thanks for having me. Look, I only went 39 minutes, 30 seconds over. <laughs>